Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to some more StarCraft 2 action. This time around, I'm bringing you a high-level StarCraft 2 replay. It's going to be in the mid to high Grandmaster in terms of MMR. And we're going to have two young people, two young players who are trying to prove themselves. It's going to be a ZBT from the lower bracket finals of the Patches 6K Open. I think it was number five, but correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, hope you'll enjoy it, and let's present our players in the bottom right side of Frostbite. And yes, we're gonna have three unique maps that you most likely haven't seen if you only play ladder. But, nonetheless, in the bottom right side, we're gonna look at our main command center of our Red Terran. For the Platinum Heroes, this is Nikorakt. And his opponent, one of the hottest names in StarCraft currently, at least according to me, Super young, super fast, super talented, in my opinion. Plays banger after banger after banger. He is none other than GG Machine from 3D Clan. Now, this map is a bit, I would say, all over the place. Um, I don't know, it just feels, feels a tad bit all over the place, in my opinion, because... It's like huge with like, you know, a couple of choke points and uh, corridors and some open areas and some not so open areas. The bases are actually in, uh, in weird spots. Okay. We're gonna have a third base coming in. Reaper will try to chip away at these links. Just, you know, a couple shots, making it more uh, impactful. Oh. Oh, targeting down two links. Beautifully done there. Okay, inject. Double inject, actually. That's uh, quite unusual, I would say. Second Reaper is here. Checks for the third base. Oh, I think I know why. Okay, I think I know why. Usually you want to link uh, your third base with your natural. So, the three Reapers have arrived. The three Amigos. Oh. Okay. Nice grenades. One of these Reapers is super, super low HP. Okay. Moves in. Once again. Nicely done here. And wait a moment. Was this... Oh, this was a, a two barracks opener, I believe, but... Interesting, so even the wall off is, is quite weird, I would say. It's gonna take some time to, to get used to the, the map as well. Oh, tries to jump down with all the Reapers and manages to escape. That is absolutely uh, critical for Nicaract. But there's five Reapers, I believe maybe six? No, not six. I think four Reapers, one shot a Zergling or something. So you should be able to one shot Lings at a fast pace with five Reapers. Hopefully, even if he just a moves, doesn't really have to like target fire. It's absolutely amazing if you can actually click uh, link by link. I don't think uh, any Terran in his right mind tries to do that. Now look at that beautiful wall off here with the single uh, tech lab and the barracks and the depot. Oh, one of the Reapers is gonna go down. A couple of nice nades could actually seal the deal. Nikorak is trying to get away. Oh, but it's gonna get cornered. Oh, but a jump up spot. Okay. This is interesting. It's gonna park that Reaper over there. In the meantime, uh, do we have... We have no third command center as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Oh, never mind. There is a third command center. Okay, so third command center has been finished. And we're gonna go into the third barracks uh, no engineering bay has started yet I believe we have gases being taken or at least a single gas being taken by GG machine and bailing nest is going to be the tech of choice in this third game so this frostbite map is actually that yeah it's kind of sick to be honest like you can see that Nicaract has this um, the supply depot over here. Now he's gonna move out with these marines. 
So the first two better acts are, are moving out with the Marines as well. Gonna take down this Overlord most likely. Yep, that is gonna be the case. Uh, Stim is finished. Combat shield just started. We have double engineering base starting as well. Gonna clean up a couple of creep tumors over here. Okay, oh, could pick up. Nice. Nicely done here. Oh, but that's a lot of queens. He needs to turn back. Oh, needs to be very, very careful. In the meantime, we can see GG Machine just expanding towards this fourth gold or gold fourth. Whatever you want to call it. Oh, there's a bit of a clump here. Oh, loses a couple of Marines, but not the end of the day. So if you can keep the Zerg busy with the first two medevacs, that is absolutely crucial to to manage to macro up behind it and just probably get... Oh, there we go. There's a fourth base as well. Uh, will this be a planetary? That's no question. So Nicarak will take this base as the third, which is, in my opinion, kind of questionable, I want to say. I also wonder if you can actually... I don't think you can place a tank there, right? If you could place a tank there, that would be absolutely uh, crucial as a defensive tool for the Terra. It would be sort of... Uh, not unbreakable. I guess unbreakable is not the right uh, word. But it would be really, really obnoxious. Medivac is being repaired. And so far, so good. GG Machine takes a fifth base. So he's going to play a fast expanding style. Something that we don't usually talk about, so... Um, fourth base should go down around uh, five minutes, right? So, And probably the fifth should go down around eight minutes. At least. Well, depends on the game as well. But GG Machine says that he's going to be able to actually do this without too many issues whatsoever. Bailing speed has been finished, and we're going to have a uh, 1 1 melee carapace combo as the upgrades. And now, some multi prong attack, trying to do something uh, on both sides. Nice target fire here on the side of Nicarag. That was clutch. We're gonna have 1-1 one, one for the next time they unload. Maybe he's gonna try to come in. Let's see, he's controlling them. Oh, target fire. Nicely picking up all those Marines. Gonna leave one behind. There's always one Marine getting Kerrigan, I believe. Now he's gonna switch to the other side. Gonna move in. Potentially even uh, canceling this base. Oh, there's the cancel. Gonna have to pick up. Let's see. Are there queens in position? Nope. It's gonna be 10 marines with 1-1 one, one and stim. Targeting down a queen. Oh, but a lot of these marines have fallen now. Oh, three to four marines have fallen. But the crack is actually having a a decent economy here. GG machine on 86 drones, which is absolutely uh, acceptable. And it's quite crucial if you play Ling Bane, right? Because you want, like, a uh, relatively cheap army that you can trade off, uh, trade out for for a couple of uh, expensive Terran units. Maybe do some damage and stuff like that and remax fast. So Ling Bane is, is something like that. You just go in, uh, try to run by with a couple of Banelings and Lings, you know, take off a, a base, take off a couple of things. Uh oh oh no oh my god are you kidding me oh my god are you joking me what oh no oh i remember the coolant towers back from oh there was that winter map that had it with the i believe it was with the the zonaga tower also occupying the gold and I believe it was Scarlet or someone who discovered that you place a hatchery, you wait until like five, uh, 500 HP because I believe that was the cooling tower's HP. So when the debris would fall, it would damage the hatchery and, and that's pretty much it. The debris would not form in that case. I didn't check for the, for the HP of the debris. That's for sure. Uh, 500 HP only. Okay, that's interesting. So I guess they changed that. Oh, that was absolutely devastating for GG Machine. Oh no, and 10 workers have fallen. Ultra Cavern on the way. Sorry, no, the Ultra Cavern done already. 2-2 two, two finishing uh, relatively soon. Couple of Stim Marines. Oh, gotta cancel. 
something here I didn't actually oh the pool the spawning pool oh no the spawning pool has been destroyed oh Nicaract is picking apart GG machine GG machine is maxed out but it's looking really really grim losing tech losing a base especially the gold base I mean it's not the end of the day because uh, not the end of the world I don't know what's with me I, I cannot say this phrase properly today anyways Okay, Liberator will be able to spot these links over here. It's going to siege up in those crucial locations. Potentially going to try to, to mine out these minerals. Maybe take an, another base. Never mind, he's going to take this base that is between the two entrances. So it's going to seal off these, those two entrances, which is not bad. Ultralists are going to try and uh, do something about it. Okay. Let's see what his plan is going to be with these two medevacs. Everything is getting pulled into the main base. And now the right side is getting a bit exposed here. Okay, he's gonna have to move away. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, one HP better back. Two HP actually, doesn't matter. One shot. This base is once again under pressure. Everything moves away. Is there at least a single meta back? Nope. Oh, sorry, a single Hydra. There's not. Oh no, and now Nicarak could move in. Oh, never mind. He's gonna lose that one medevac for sure. Oh, he's gonna lose the other medevac as well. And now his pressure has been weakened significantly. The the pressure that has been there in the corner of the base is now no more. So no units need to be uh, placed there to be sure that it doesn't do any more uh, chaos, any more damage. Lurker's on the way, so this is a, a complex unit composition we have ultras we have lurkers that's beefy tanky at the ground is 100% dominated a couple of hydras will be able to deal with these liberators we have plus one missile and we have plus three carapace close uh, halfway done adrenal is also going to finish relatively soon and the lurker upgrades size expands already finished wow this is looking like a super fast paced game and I love it, honestly. It's a lot harder to keep up with it, but it's a lot more fun, to be honest. Okay, Ultras are gonna move in. Liberators are being taken down. Oh, but I heard the pew pews. Oh, ho, ho, the Ultras are getting taken down, as well as the Hydras and Lurkers and everything else is being taken down. Nidus is coming in. Oh no, Nicarak doesn't actually realize this. Oh, there's gonna be lurkers in there. Oh, this is gonna look devastating. Both both bases are being flooded with lurkers. Let's see, is he going to... Yeah, he's going to actually place lurkers in the midst of the production on top of the ramp. Nicarak, oh no, the ghosts, no. Oh my God, absolute devastation here all of a sudden. Can he actually hold this? Nicarak was doing so good. And now those two Nidus's have gone up. And now another Nidus coming up. And there's two lurkers burrowed at the back of the of the natural, I believe. Is that the natural or the third base? Whatever that is. And now the production is under siege. The production is absolutely under siege. Oh no. Production buildings falling one after the other. 39 workers have fallen. The planetary is going to fall. And there's the GG. And GG machine brings it back into a a super swift blow with some lurkers and already taking game number one and game number two will feature a really really cool map honestly i i looked around it and we're gonna take a tour it's gonna be on iliad in the bottom left side we are looking at the main hatchery of the winner from the last game opening a relatively standard every single time but actually kicking it up a notch this is GG Machine. Presenting 3D Clan, of course. And his opponent, uh, Red Terran, is trying to keep up that pace that he had last game. Some small mistakes, couple unlucky positions, and of course, a unlucky Nidus network that ruined his chances at winning the first one. But he is a relatively, oh, I would say, one of the, the stronger Terrans outside of the pro scene. Oh. The top of the pro scene so to say because he can be considered a pro this is nicaract all right so 
in the meantime the reaper already arrived <laughs> we had a single drone falling so gg machine <laughs> losing a drone imagine <laughs> uh, so i i need to mention uh i think i mentioned it outside of the recording but this one this one is uh this series has been handpicked by patches himself he said hey if you're looking to cast any series this one was a banger fast paced really fun to watch really fun to cast by the way look at this oh my god this looks amazing i love the tile set by the way i love the a, a lot of the the huge amount of green of, over here i love the blockades as well not gonna lie they look good i would say and they don't actually block that much mix of light shading death horror plus Jagannatha. yes yes exactly that's that's how it looks like um due to like having bases on the high ground or low ground you know um i would also say there's a little t just a tad bit maybe of tropical sacrifice but i might be wrong i wasn't too big of a fan of that map but oh that's a lot of lanes over here oh <laughs> Actually, we need to be on point with this casting. Couple links would arrive before the first pylon goes down. <laughs> I'm not sure. Would they? I mean, this is looking like a, a really tiny entrance, so so it actually goes into a choke point, right? This this feels like it. You can basically you can basically just you know. Um, oh my god. These links are actually not going to achieve anything. In the meantime, there's 40 workers only for GG Machine, so... He is actually pressuring a lot with these links. Um, but yeah, I would say, like, let's see how many depots it takes, actually. Well, I guess Nikrak could have placed that second depot, like, here, and, and maybe that would have made it one less depot than it will take now. And she's coming in, but there's a spore here, so... Not gonna do too much. Second Banshee is also in the production. And it's gonna be equipped with Banshee Cloak. Takes five. Yeah, I would also say five. Like, should be like three depots like here and, and here. And you're gonna have like a, a concave of depots. In the meantime, Nickrack is actually in a really, really decent spot, I would say. Just, uh... Basically lost pretty much nothing besides that first Reaper, which is really, really cool. Oh, this Banshee might even ca uh, cancel this. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh. Oh, my God. That was so clutch. <laughs> oh, that was so clutch. But this is going to be a cancel for sure. Now the worker will fall as well. Now the creep tumors are going to fall. Actually, I just realized that... It takes three shots for the Banshees to clear Creep Tumor. Okay. Gonna have to morph another Overseer. That's quite late on the, the Overseer morph. I'm not sure when the, when the lair finished, but yeah. Nickrack will uncloak these Banshees to preserve some energy. Oh, maybe this worker, <laughs> maybe this drone is gonna fall down again. Oh, never mind. The fourth base might get, oh, sorry, the fifth base might get cancelled once again. And the worker as well. There's no Creep here. let's see it took five actually six well i would say it takes it, it can take four as well i'm gonna say that it can take four if you place it uh, uh like correctly quote unquote correctly if you play around a bit with the sim city it, it will take only four but five you should not take more than five so it was a bit of a glitch in the matrix there <laughs> the building uh building schematics Five is definitely uh, a correct answer. Six is like a bit of an overcommitment. <laughs> Let's just say it. If there's a Bane bust, uh, it matters if the if there's five depots going down or or six depots. Okay. So we're stuck on Ling Bane. There's no actual 
um, additional stuff going on. We have any an infestation pit. So, is this gonna be for infestors? Is this, is this gonna be for uh, a fast hive? Or well, fast hive? It's not gonna be a fast hive anymore. I feel like GG Machine has lost a lot of uh, a lot of stuff early on. So, the delays on the on the extra base. To do it with eight, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can do it with twelve. And I'm just gonna build like a ring or something. Oh, these queens are gonna fall. And I believe this is gonna be game relatively soon. There's three queens remaining, two more in production. And GG Machine is floating a tad bit, but he has no units to actually, uh, well, no tech to actually spend it on. He's gonna have a couple of bailings, a couple of links also still morphing. And he spent his larva. He's on 75 workers, but he cannot actually fill those workers, which is going to be a, a huge deal. So, even though if you don't lose these, if they cannot mine, they're basically dead supply, right? So, there's no way you can actually do anything with it. Nicorak is just basically doing well since the very first defense with those aliens against those uh, links. And now he's going to get a fourth base. Actually, he's also quite late on his fourth base, as if you if you don't mind me mentioning that. I think he could have gotten it a lot faster. Maybe he's gonna go for the safe play, obviously. A couple of Hellbats will actually help out here. And he's, he's quite patient, he's not really going to, uh, to overcommit here. I think he learned his lesson from last time, he knows that he's in the commanding spot. My god, look at that gas bank of Jiju Machine. And there's the Hive coming in, but... There's literally nothing that you should spend the gas on. There's no Ravagers, there's no Hydras, there's no... Yeah, there's, there's basically nothing to spend your gas on. You cannot go mass bailing either. Oh, a couple of tanks will go down. Let's see. Oh, second tank is not falling. And there's third tank as well in there. Banshees are still alive. At least one of them. That's gonna be it. GG Machine just tapping out. Realizing that there's no point staying in this game as the workers are falling. And that means we're gonna go to an equalizer. Or this is the equalizer basically. And we're gonna go to a decider. And we are back with our decider game. It's gonna be played on the 2.0 version of Sacred Isles by none other than Patches. And spawning in the bottom left side, we are looking at a GG Machine's main hatchery. Going up against our Red Terran, the super clean in the previous game, Nicoract. This is going to be an interesting map, by the way. So, look at this. We have a, a half base, Moondance shenanigans over here. We also have a mineral wall. This Reaper comes in and tries to do some damage. Nothing has fallen so far. Okay, oh, one link. It looks like GG Machine just uh, went for, what's this? I believe it was a, a inject, right? I believe it was an inject. So, super standard opener on both sides, I believe. Third command center is coming down before the starboard. Nothing too fancy about it. Probably it's going to be a tech lab into uh, a, a add-on swap for some banshees, even with cloak. And of course, heli production is on the way. Now, look at this. There's one set of mineral wall over here and one over here. And already GG Machine is mining this out, so he's going to have access to this um, rich Vespin geyser base. This map is, is looking really, really cool. I don't mind this one. Uh, the first time I played it, I believe I played like a, a ZVZ on this. And I'm more of an all-inner in ZVZ. I'm not going to lie about it. So I'm not exactly the biggest fan. Now, Nick Cracked, if he paid attention, he saw the the, the gold minerals in the, the claws of those drones. And he should be able to decide that uh, it's going to be the gold base being taken now why i said moon dance moon dance is basically the map where there was a pocket base behind your natural so you had your main and the triangle basically the triangle backwards was a pocket base 
which was relatively safe but it was also like only six patches in the single gas so you took it for like two and a half base all ins or something like that or maybe you kept it for uh, for a, a four or fifth base and depending on on how the game progressed you know it was a safe choice to take uh, obviously you wanted to have some vision over there I've seen stuff like, you know, Nidus's in there. I've been Nidus because I played Protoss back then. I've been Nidus um, in these locations already. And I had a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of shenanigans coming to my towards my way on that map, so I don't necessarily miss it. Okay. How many Hellions? Okay, six Hellions. There's a Banshee over here. So that's where the queens came. And so the queens tried to actually deny here. Creep tumor is getting sniped. A couple of links as well. One more link and the creep tumors are being taken out. So now the Terran can always wait and just try to... To make sure that uh, the creep resides. Okay. Never mind. It's not going to happen, by the way, because obviously GG Machine is on top. Gonna make uh, Nicarag waste another scan. That means a scan will deny, deny you one mule. So you need to be careful, but also you need to make sure that the Zerg creep spread is not going to go rampant, as it can happen quite easily. Now, obviously, this is this should not be opened until the late game, or at least the mid to late game. Overloaded position, just spotting uh, whatever it has to spot. Two cloak banshees gonna walk into the Zerg base. Uh, the spore is out of position and it could cause a couple of uh, issues here for GG Machine. Hellions are gonna move in most likely. Yep, that is indeed going to be the case. But there's gonna be queens here so they should be snide or they should retreat. No other option. Oh, gonna burn two drones to a crisp. And GG Machine is going to open this. Now, this one is actually... Um, and this is something I, I don't like about the current map pool that you need to open up rocks after rocks after rocks Mineral walls rocks mineral walls rocks, you know, I'm not a fan of this So I would by the way, I would love crimson court in the current map pool uh, At the time of recording this if you're watching on YouTube, then there's a map called crimson court if you're watching this like in the next map pool or something uh, Be sure to check it out on the custom tab and uh, tell me if you feel claustrophobic on that map or not because it's an absolute uh beauty of a map honestly like i love how it looks i love the design the tile set everything i just hate the whole map layout with all the rocks and mineral walls and everything you can take four bases before you need to open rocks and the third and fourth base are actually quite exposed so to say well at least a fourth base if you take like the, the rich vesping geyser base same with Amphion, you either take a, a randomly exposed third or you take, you, you just mine out the minerals and, and take the relatively safe third. But yeah, it's still like, you know, extra stuff that you need to do and you need to, uh, you need to basically Pay attention to that as well, and you need to do it at the right time and all that stuff so you don't fall behind in timing. Okay, lots of hydras, by the way. How many hydras? Oh, 27 hydras. All right, that's wild. Hive on the way, as well as the lurker then. It's about to finish. Uh, the lurker then is not going to be um, lined up with the hive, so the lurker upgrades are not going to be in time for a, a timing attack, so to say. Well, maybe the, the side, maybe side spines can finish until two two is finished. Assuming that hive is gonna be quicker. No, I don't know the exact timings. Can beat lurkers, Nick Crack. Show me the way. <laughs> Let's see. There's a lot of marines over here, so those marines should not be the best to actually deal with this. So we're gonna have stim finishing. It's actually quite a late stim, to be honest. No? Oh, there's combat shield already. And 2-2-2 two, two, two is on the way. 
I'm not sure what happened here. <laughs> I think it was just uh, simply a late, late uh, stim. But look at that, 15 marines are being pumped out at the, sa at the same time. And now there's going to be three medevacs worth of stuff. And the Zerg army in the center. Now let's see, it's going to be a race to see who's going to reach the thing first. This base should be cancelled. Now tanks are going to be uh, the crucial key units over here. Because tanks outrange lurkers. The three medevacs are actually going to cause a lot of trouble on the left side. Everything just moves in. Now the crack can move in. He is gonna see jump these tanks. Lurkers are gonna move back just to keep the distance between the tanks. Tanks outrange the lurkers. He's gonna try to buy some time. Clean up this uh, top side push or left side push, so to say. And the right side could actually uh, be could be safe or should be safe. And look at that! Look at that beautiful cleanup. What's happening again? I don't know, the music just uh, stopped, so no worries. No symphony here. The music tries to decide what kind of music should we actually play here. Yeah, I hear something already, and look at that. A lot of tanks here. Gonna try to actually do something about it. Oh, that's nice. Blinding clouds are being dropped. The gas is gonna be denied right now for the moment. That is kind of crucial because Zerg is quite a gas heavy race and there's a lot of minerals in the bank for GG Machine. These are two relatively high value armies. The problem is, if GG Machine loses this, it's going to be a really, really tough uphill battle from this point on. He's been doing really, really well, but looks like Nicarag just patiently playing this out. Play the weekly, have a nice stream. Thank you so much for stopping by, Wingen. Good luck in the weekly. If you have a, a banger of a replay, be sure to send it over. It's always a lot of fun to actually cast some more for more replays. This is looking really, really good for, for Nicarag for the moment. If he doesn't fumble massively, this should favor Nicarag, right? Oh, the lurkers are being destroyed, dismantled. Gonna basically pull in a couple of tanks. That's minus three tanks. And there's a Nidus Worm coming up. There it is. I'm curious where the Nidus Worm is going to be. A couple of uh, unattended marines, no medevacs here, are going to rush in and potentially try to deny this base or get a couple of drones at least. Oh, he's gonna mow down a lot of these links here. And that's a huge deal. Oh, but he's gonna lose all these marines for free, basically. The links can be replaced. There's a lot of minerals in the bank. Obviously, we know this. The crack doesn't because he doesn't have vision of it, but he takes down the lurkers. He's gonna start a step and take down this uh, hatchery as well. And the crack is just dominating for now. Let's see once again the Nidus. Is it going to be enough? Oh, but he actually scans the Nidus Worm, actually. Sorry, like the Nidus Network. So the Nidus Worm should not be of any any issue whatsoever. No unit has been stuck in the Nidus Worm. If you take down the Nidus Network and the last Nidus Worm, and there's a unit in there that is just gone. Marines are getting taken down. A lot of links are going to uh, accompany these Hydras and Lurkers. Now GG Machine is rushing across the map. Trying to do something here. Let's see. Tanks need to be sieged up and it's going to do just that. Potentially going to try and, and move in here. Oh, it's going to move back. You got to be careful, by the way, because if you... Uh, if you're not careful enough, you might just actually accidentally sacrifice your whole army. That means you... You basically... Uh, let the AI, you know, uh, draw aggro. If you get shot, the closest units are going to try and uh, deal with the threat. They're going to try to fight back. Okay, going to move in. Oh, these tanks are not sieged. That could be devastating. Let's see, where's the blinding cloud? The blinding cloud on top of the bio. That's not bad. It looks like GG Machine is getting some good trades here. Does he have enough? Yes, he does. 
There's 37 supply left for Nicorac. And this is looking really, really tall for our Protoss, uh, sorry, Protoss player. There's no Protoss in here, guys. Our Terran player is looking uh, to fall apart, for now at least. Oh, he lost the command center, I believe. But he has a fresh and new command center just going, uh, going out to this bottom right side. Top left is not being taken yet. A GG machine has six bases. I believe six bases. There's no macro hatches as far as I've seen. Once again, the Nidus is getting taken down. Where's the second Nidus network? Okay, it's uh, at the edge of the natural. Or in the natural, so to say. It's kind of a weird layout, so <laughs> it's difficult to say. I mean, you can consider this as the natural as well. It's a bit easier to drop. Obviously, if you decide to do a Doom Drop, that should be early on. That could be devastating for whoever takes that. Oh, pulls, uh, pulls the tanks in, also drops the Blind Cloud. Bit of a mix uh, mix up there with the, the abilities. But GG Machine is pressing pedal to the metal, basically. Lurkers are gonna burrow. Oh, and there it is. Nicorac taps out as it was too much. And that means this amazing series is being taken by a GG machine just as a context. Let's see. Oh my goodness. There we go. 40,000 resources lost in a 15 minute game. That is absolutely beautiful. I love these uh, chaotic battles. And although Nicaract was in a decent position, he managed to, you know, GG machine managed to pull it back. Just get the right amount of units, get the right fights. The, the best positions that he could get and he managed to clean this whole thing up if you enjoyed it guys be sure to come over to youtube or vice versa come over to twitch as we have these type of sessions quite regularly i would say i'm trying to do these at least once a week if not two depends uh always depends on the schedule but yeah if you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like leave a subscribe something along those lines whatever you feel like and of course i'll see you in the next one peace out